What if every Pokemon game had a four starter Pokemon? Well, in this video, I go over just that, and I commission one new starter Pokemon for every region, starting with the Kanto region in red and blue, and ending with Paldea in Scarlet and Violet. Let's do this. All right, starting with the Kanto region, these starter Pokemon seem to have two overlapping themes. The first theme is that they're all typical household pets, since Bulbasaur is based on a frog, Charmander is based on a lizard, and Squirtle is based on a turtle, and Pikachu and Eevee are based on a mouse and a cat, if you want to count them. The second theme is that each starter Pokemon roughly represents a period of history, with Venusaur representing ancient times by practically being a dinosaur, Charizard representing the Middle Ages by simply being a dragon, and Blastoise representing the modern era, since it has steel cannons on its back. So, with these two themes in mind, for the 4 starter Pokemon for the Kanto region, I created Gutenbug, the pure bug type Pokemon. And I think it fits under the two themes well. Because for one, it's based on a bug, which could make a great household pet. And for two, Gutenbug could represent the fourth period of history, which is the early modern era. And if you were paying attention to history class, one of the biggest inventions from that era was the printing press. So I thought Gutenberg's final evolution could represent that in some way. And I think the artist Malmez captured that vibe just well, since the circle on his belly could represent the stamp that the printing press would use. It's a small but nice detail to represent the early modern era. And also, I think the bug typing was necessary, because after all, Pocket Monsters is based on the bugs that Satoshi Tsujiri would catch when he was a kid. So it was only fitting for one of the starter Pokemon to represent that as well. And as for his moveset, I think it would have moves like Pound and Stomp to represent the printing press pounding a giant stamp on paper. Pin Missile because the printing press is essentially a pin missile, since it produces writing really fast. And other moves like Seismic Toss and Leash Life. All of these moves would do just well. Oh, and if you're wondering why it's called Gutenberg, well, the visitor of the printing press is Johannes Gutenberg. So we just slapped on Bug at the end of his last name and called it a day, which I thought was pretty clever. And yeah, there you go. That would be the 4 starter Pokemon for the Kanto region, in my opinion. So let's move on. Next we have the Johto region, and these star Pokemon seem to have only one theme, and that theme is, is that they represent the different ages of the dinosaurs. Since so Beganium is based on the sauropod dinosaur, which emerged during the early Jurassic period, Fryalligator is based on the ancient alligator, which first appeared during the Cretaceous period, and Typhlosion is based on the volcano that caused the dinosaurs to go extinct. Since so it is the volcano Pokemon, and that its Asuian form is a ghost type that apparently leads forsaken souls to the afterlife by using its flames, which sounds a lot like leading dinosaurs to their death. So, with all this in mind, I thought it'd be obvious to create a starter Pokemon from the remaining dinosaur era, the Triassic era, which is the earliest of the three time periods, taking place nearly 250 million years ago. And with that, meet Triaptor, a Pokemon that is based on the Eoraptor, which is one of the earliest known dinosaurs from the Triassic period. And as you can tell, it is a pure ground type Pokemon, and remains that way all the way up to its final stage, since the other starter Pokemon are all monotypes as well. And the reason why I made it a pure ground type is because during the Triassic Age, the supercontinent Pangaea was covered in deserts and had a very hot and dry environment. So if tried to live during this era of dinosaurs, it would survive pretty easily, especially since its tail has adapted to filter sand, and even more so when it evolves. And that's something I really like about the design that Malmes made. The first stage puffy sand out of his tail is super cute, and when it evolves, its tail becomes a unique weapon in which that it blinds the opponent while attacking them, since its tail is basically a sandy whip that is constantly spooming out sand, which leads me to its moveset. And I think it would have moves like Bone Rush, Earthquake, Ancient Power, Sandstorm, and most likely Iron Tail, since his tail is his main weapon. And then maybe a signature move called Sand Whip, where it hits his opponent with a sandy tail, which would do base damage and lower the opponent's accuracy. And that's basically it. I love Generation 2, I love Dinosaurs, and I love Triaptor, and I'll leave it at that. So let's move on to the next one. Next we have the Hoenn region, and these star Pokemon only have one theme as well, and that theme is Adaption. Since Trico is based on the leaf tail Gecko, which evolved into looking like a leaf, Torchic is based on the folklore fire-breathing chicken, which evolved to breathe fire to fend off humans, and Mudkip is based on the Axwaddle, which evolved to have the ability to regenerate and transform into a terrestrial salamander at will, so that it can survive on land when it needs to. So, with adaption in mind, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty tough narrowing down a specific animal that could represent this theme well, since basically every animal on Earth has adapted to their environment in some way. But during my research, I discovered that crabs are theorized to be the final line of evolution, since there has been so many different animals that have gone through carcinization and staying that way for millions of years, with carcinization meaning that the animal turned into a crab-like creature. So, I thought it'd be fitting for the 4 starter Pokemon for the Hoenn region to be a crab. So meet Cramorai, the dark type crab. And this Pokemon is based on the Heke Crab, a crab that developed a shell that looks like a samurai face due to human interaction. Since during ancient times, fishermen would throw back any crab that resembled a Heke warrior, thinking that they were fallen souls. And I thought that was such a cool concept, which made me decide to make Kramurai a samurai, which becomes more apparent when it evolves when it gains a steel typing. And as an evil samurai crab, it would have moves like Crab Hammer, Fury Cutter, Aerial Lace, Metal Claw, Knock Off, and probably Memento, since samurai do practice seppuku, which is when, you know, they take their sword and they give themselves a permanent tummy ache 
forever, if you know what I mean. And as for its ability, I think the ability Battle Armor would do the trick, since it is a samurai with a suit of armor. And yeah, that's Kramurai, a Pokemon that is based on peak evolution and a samurai looking crap, which I thought was pretty awesome. Next up, we have the Sinnoh region. And as you probably guessed, the Sinnoh stars are all based on mythological creatures. Since Torterra is based on a world turtle, which is a creature that is thought to bear the weight of the entire Earth on its back. And Fernape is based on Sun Wukong, or as you may know him as, Sun Goku, who is the king of all monkeys who has various powers and abilities. And Apollyon, who is based on the Greek god Poseidon, who is one of the 12 Olympians who rules over the sea. So between these three starters, they've covered Hindu mythology, Chinese mythology, and Greek mythology. So I thought why not delve into one of the most well-known mythologies, Norse mythology. And that's exactly what I did, so with that, meet Thanor, the electric goat Pokemon, who is based on the god of thunder Thor and his two goats. And yeah, if you didn't know, Thor has two flying goats named Tangrisner and Tangroister, which I thought would make a great Pokemon concept. And I think the final design came out amazingly, because as you can see, Thanos' horns are based on Thor's winged helmet. And of course, his typing is giving homage to Thor being the god of thunder. And then when it evolves into his final stage, it gains a flying type. But as you can tell, it has no wings. And that's because it flies using its hooves in some way. Kind of like how Dodrio flies with his feet. And I mean, hey, goats in general don't make any sense. Like, just look at this goat climbing up this vertical hill. Like, how is it doing that? It makes no sense. So Thanor will be the first flying type Pokemon with no wings, which adds to the weird factor. And something else that I liked a lot about his final stage is that you can kind of see Thor's hammer with his head and his horns. So maybe his name could be a play on the word Mjolnir. Maybe like Gjolnir or something. And as for his moves, it would obviously learn Thunder and Fly, and other moves like Bulldoze, Double Edge, and maybe Milk Drink, since goats are used to produce milk. So you would have a flying electric goat that's sucking on his own titty, drinking his own milk, charging at you, which would just be hilarious. And as for its ability, I think Volt Absorb would do it justice, since Thor is the God of Thunder, and it would be weird for the God of Thunder to be hurt by electricity. So Volt Absorb it is. And yeah, that's about it. A mythological starter Pokemon based on Thor himself, which I think is pretty cool. Next up, we have the Unova region, and this generation has two overlapping starter themes. The first theme is that they're all based on empires, with Superior being based on the French Empire, since Ken Sugimori himself stated the design was inspired by the manga series The Rose of Versailles, which takes place during the French Revolution. Embor is based on the Emperor of the Qin Dynasty, which is hinted by Embor's patterns and its name, and Samurai is obviously based on the Samurai from Feudal Japan. And then, along with that, the second theme for the Star Pokemon is that they all represent the cultural melting pot of New York, since they each represent Western, Chinese, and Japanese cultures, respectively. So, with these two themes in mind, the four Star Pokemon need to be based on a powerful empire and a prevalent culture in New York. And I thought what better than having the British Empire thrown into the mix. And I think it works perfectly, because the British Empire was the most powerful empire in world history, and callous New Yorkers migrated from Britain, which contributes to New York's cultural melting pot. So, with taking that all into account, I think if Unova had a four-starter Pokemon, it would be Bullet, the normal type Bulldog Pokemon. And immediately, I thought the name Bullet was very clever, because it's based on British national dog, the Bulldog. And along with that, it's based on the Red Coast from the British Empire, who were among the first soldiers to use modern bullets, if not the first. And along with those two things, the name Bullet just seems like a name a dog would have, so it works out perfectly. And once Bullet evolves into his final stage, it gains a Steel type, which undoubtedly captures the red coat look from the British Empire. From the black hair looking like the soldier's hat, to the astral red coat with the black belt, to even the British royalty look that represents the Empire, Malmez did an amazing job, and I love how it came out. And with this awesome design, it needs an awesome move set, so the moves I think it would learn would be Bite, Takedown, Retaliate, Iron Defense, Iron Tail, and Flash Cannon, with Flash Cannon kind of representing the musket they would use in war. And as for its ability, maybe it could have something like Sturdy or Sheer Force, to represent the power the British Empire had. And yeah, that's about it. There's a cute little Bulldog Pokemon that is dressed like a red coat, and I love it. Next up, we have the Kalos region, and this generation probably has a cool starter theme, with the stars representing RPG classes. And it's pretty straightforward because Chestnut is based on a knight, Delphox is based on a mage, and Greninja is based on a rogue. No other explanation needed. But something that might need an explanation is their sub-theme. And this sub-theme is that they have a type triangle within a type triangle. So, along with their primary types having advantages against one another, their secondary typings have advantages as well. Since fighting beats dark, dark beats psychic, and psychic beats fighting. So, if the Kalos region had a 4 starter Pokemon, it would need to fit in with this double type triangle, as well as being based on an RPG class. So, with all of that in mind, we came up with the perfect Pokemon. And that Pokemon is Cowley, the Holy Cow Pokemon. Yes, I love it. 
And as you can tell by his name, Kelly is based on the Cleric RPG class, which is a class that is known for his healing abilities, hence why it is a holy cow. And of course, as a holy cow, it will know a lot of healing moves, like Mill Drink and Moonlight, see what I did there? And other moves like Recover, Heal Pulse, Healing Wish, and Life Dew. And along with these healing moves, it will most certainly have the healer ability, which has a chance of healing an ally status condition in battle, which I think fits the cleric class perfectly. And as for his typing, the only type combination that worked with the double type triangle was the ground ghost type, which honestly works really well with Kali in his final evolution. Because I can see a cow being a ground type and a cleric being a ghost type, since cows are on the ground, and clerics are essentially priests, and priests usually preach about the afterlife, which is where the ghost type comes into play. So with this, Kali will start as a pure ground type and then gain the ghost type being in his final stage, where it becomes a legitimate RPG class, like all the other starters. And just like the other starters, Kali's final stage will gain a weapon that pairs with his class. And as you can see on his head, his weapon is essentially a mace that also acts as a cleric staff. And I like to think this weapon traps spirits of the dead and uses their energy to create healing spells. Pretty grim, I know, but it's a cool concept. And yeah, that's basically it. Your holy cow Pokemon. I love it. Next up, we have the Alola region, and these star Pokemon have two themes. The first theme is that they're all based on a circus, with bow ties, dart throwers, sharpshooters, ringmasters, lions, heel wrestlers, seals, dancers, and singers, respectively. And then the second theme is that they're based on classical literature, with the CGI being the hero, Incineroar being the villain, and Primarina being the damsel in distress. So, with these two themes in mind, I needed to come up with a Pokemon that you would see in a circus, but also in classical literature. So from that, we came up with Burfan, the wizardly circus Pokemon. And I know what you're thinking, how does an elephant wizard fit into classical literature? Well, it's because both elephants and wizards are very smart and are usually portrayed as wise beings. And typically, in most stories, the hero meets a wise elder who guides him down the right path to save the damsel in distress from the antagonist. So from that, we have the hero, the sage, the villain, and the damsel in distress, which I think works perfectly. And as for Murfan's typing, I think it would start out as a psychic type and then gain the rock type in its final stage. And man, I just love how this concept came out. I really love how Mamas incorporated the stone ball that elves usually balance on in the circus and cleverly made it into a wizard's crystal ball, which I thought was just so smart. And as for his moveset, it would have moves like Psychic, Calm Mind, Hypnosis, Switcheroo, Mystical Fire, Magic Room, Energy Ball, Rock Blast, Rock Throw, Rollout, and Ancient Power. A lot of moves I know, but this Pokemon just has so much flavor to it. And as for its ability, I just imagine Murfin flying around on his crystal ball using his psychic powers, so I think the Levitate ability will suit it just well. Oh, and if you're wondering why his name is Murfant, well, it's because it's a combination of the most famous wizard, Merlin, and the word elephant, which I thought sounded pretty cool. And yeah, that's about it. A floaty wizardly circus-like elephant casting magical spells at you. It's definitely an interesting concept. Next up, we have the Gala region, and these star Pokemon only have one theme, and that theme is that they're all based on different styles of British entertainment. Since Real Boom is based on the Beatles drummer Ringo Starr from the music industry, Cinerace is based on a footballer from the sports industry, and Italian is based on the 007 character James Bond from the film industry. So if the Gala region had a four starter Pokemon, it would need to be based on another popular form of entertainment in Britain, and I thought of the perfect industry. So with that, meet Kabuk, the pure fairy type Pokemon, who is based on Gordon Ramsay from the television industry. And I know, Gordon Ramsay doesn't generally do British television, but he is British, so I'm gonna count it. And yeah, besides that, there really isn't much else to say about this concept. It's pretty straightforward. I simply chose it to be a lion because British National Animal is a lion, and I chose the fairy type for no particular reason. I just thought if any Pokemon was going to be a chef, the fairy type would represent it best. Especially since there are Pokemon based on food in the Gala region who are fairy types themselves. So maybe with that, Kabu could be their natural fairy predator in the wild, and uses them as ingredients for his famous dishes. And speaking of famous dishes, that is what his final stage is known for, and I really like how the design came out. As you can see, it has Gordon Ramsay's famous forehead wrinkles and a dipper spoon looking tail, and also his fur looks like a chef's coat, and I just love that detail. And thank god it's not bipedal, because those human looking Pokemon nowadays just look kinda weird. I'm looking at you, Cinderace. And all in all, I can definitely see Gordon Ramsay in this Pokemon, so it is definitely a success. And as for his moveset, I think it would have moves like Soft Boiled, Egg Bomb, Lick, Sweet Kiss, Swallow, Smelling Salts, and Play Rough. Since Gordon Ramsay is pretty rough with his contestants on his shows. And yeah, there really aren't a lot of cooking based moves, so a few signature ones will be definitely warranted here. And as for its ability, maybe something like Gluttony, though I think a unique ability will be warranted here too. Let me know in the comments if you have any cool suggestions. And yeah, that's basically Kabuk, the Gordon Ramsay inspired chef Pokemon, who would make a great fit as a 4 starter Pokemon in the Galar region. And finally, we have the Paldea region, and these star Pokemon have two themes. The first theme is that they're all based on triple threat performers, with the triple threat being acting with Mioscarida, singing with Skelly Dirge, and dancing with Qual Qualvel. 
And then the second theme is that they're all based on Spanish holidays. With the holidays being Mardi Gras for Meow Scarda, Day of the Dead with Skelly Dirge, and Rio Carnival with Qual Quavel. So, if the Paldea region had a 4 starter Pokemon, it would need to make the triple threat into a quadruple threat and be based on a Spanish holiday. And after a lot of brainstorming, we came up with something amazing. And so with that, meet Jesta Bear, the normal type bear Pokemon that is known for telling very bad jokes. Or should I say, unbearable jokes. Yeah, you're getting it now. And as you can tell from Jesta Bear's final stage design, it loves tomato berries. So much so, that it will purposely tell awful jokes so that Pokemon and people will throw tomato berries at it. Which I find just hilarious. And strangely, this is based on a Spanish holiday, because apparently there's a Spanish holiday called La Tomatina, where everyone throws tomatoes at each other. And I found this so funny that it became the basis of what Jester Bear came to be, and I really love how everything turned out. There's so much flavor to this Pokemon, it's just a bear, that tells cheesy jokes that people will throw his favorite food at it. It's just perfect. Even his name is a joke because it sounds like the phrase, just a bear, when it really is based on the words Jester and Bear. I just love everything about this Pokemon, it's probably my favorite out of the bunch. And as for his moves, I think it would have moves like Chatter, Disarming Voice, Echoed Voice, Hyper Voice, and a signature move of it telling a bad joke and having a Tomato Berry thrown at it, where the bad joke deals damage to the opponent while the Tomato Berry heals just a bear. I think that would be perfect. And as for its ability, I think Oblivious will suit it well. But if you have a better ability, let me know in the comments. And yeah, there you go. If the Paldea region had a 4 star Pokemon, I think a Pokemon like just a bear would work perfectly. I love it. And there you go. That is your answer if Pokemon had a 4 starter Pokemon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out my What If The Villains Won In Pokemon video. I go over every region of every villain won and what they would do if they had all that power. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.